like to explain to you a little bit about what's happening from a neurological point of view with respect to um, the board, the board members, the people in the community. You see, this is pretty darn exciting being on that board and being able to talk about you and find you and do all these things and come after you. But it's not as simple as saying that I enjoy this. The question is why? And I'm going to put together a little graph here for you. This represents the dopamine in our brain. Dopamine is that part of our neurotransmitter. It's our neurotransmitter, one of our neurotransmitters, that makes us feel pleasure. Um, those people who go out drinking kick up their dopamine. You're at a party, your dopamine's kicked up. All right. You're on the board. It's a board meeting night. It's going to be a great night. In fact, just the mere idea that it's going to be a board meeting, your dopamine is now kicked up. And your neuro, neurotransmitters in your brain are now feeling good. It's dopamine. And I'm making comments, and I'm arguing, and I'm yelling, and I'm preparing letters, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And at the end of the meeting, crash. Just like a cocaine user, just like an alcohol user, crash. Now, why do we do it again? Why does anybody who's habituated to a substance do it again? It's not the substance. It's the dopamine. It's the memory of what it did. So let's go back to our board. I want to keep on feeling good. I'm going to go ahead and do something to kick this up. Hey, let's drive around the neighborhood. Oh, look over there. There, do you see that weed? Oh. oh, oh, look at that over there, there's a trash can. Oh, did you see that little girl on the front lawn? And now the dopamine is up again. And so if I draw another graph of this and I show you what it looks like now over time, days, weeks, months, and years, Individuals doing this look like this. And the more that they can stay high, the better they are. And it's no different than the individual habituated to alcohol, cocaine, heroin, amphetamines, cigarettes, shopping. I need to stay feeling good. And the feel good in this case is the harm that I place on others. And if that seems counterintuitive to you, I'll ask you a question. How is it possible that there are people out there who will, as their profession, torture other people, inflict pain and harm? How is it that they can do that? Place people to environments where they're tortured daily hourly by the minute? And the answer is because they get pleasure from it. It's a dopamine. It's not as simple to say to them, stop, because if they do, they have to go with, for their withdrawal and they don't like it. And no, nor does the individual on cocaine like it. And we have no recovery or detoxification, psychological detoxification environment for these people to go to. And I have suggested in my writing that this is a two-tailed psychiatric disorder. At one tail, we have the community members who are now experiencing a wide range of problems related to HOA syndrome, depression, sadness, fear, irritable bowel syndrome, problem sleeping, so on and so forth. And at the other end, people who are habituated to the excitement of doing this to their neighbors.